What's up everybody? Welcome back to another transit video from Exotic Astrology after getting an overwhelming response for my Jupiter and Rahu and Saturn transit videos for this year and the next. I decided to make another video on transits which will give us the actual flavor of what is going to happen for all of the 12 ascendants. Okay? And why I am saying this is because there is something known as double transit in astrology, double transit phenomena. What is double transit? Well, uh, the most prominent astrologer in India and one of the legends of astrology, the great Kain Rao, has written a beautiful book on the phenomena of double transits of Jupiter and Saturn. Basically, it tells us where exactly are the areas of focus going to be for every different ascendant okay because jupiter represents what positive event in your life okay any achievement that you have had anything good that you get okay any positive event like childbirth okay or marriage or promotion okay or having a good family life okay all these things are represented by jupiter and then divinity spirituality wisdom guides counselors gurus and God ultimately, okay. So, and what does Saturn represent? Saturn represents our karma, okay, our karmic balance, okay. So, Jupiter and Saturn ultimately decide what happens to us in the year, okay. For example, if there is one sign in the zodiac belt, okay, if both of these two planets are affecting in their transits okay then it's like bang that house gets activated means one side is jupiter the positive event okay the positivity the growth expansion jupiter is expansion okay and on the other side you have saturn which is karmic balance okay so first saturn comes and then jupiter casts his glance on the house or if it is sitting there and then there's expansion because how can you have expansion without your karma? If that event is not there in your karma, how will it uh, take place? Yes, it won't take place. And if there is something in your karma, but it is not supposed to give you a positive expression, then Jupiter's aspect will not be there in the house. Okay. And if it is there simultaneously, Jupiter and Saturn, if they're affecting one house simultaneously, a horoscope then that house is going to have very much prominence in the person's life okay and that can be seen time and again through different uh, charts by vi visiting charts of different people okay so basically what i mean to say is that if in a year when saturn and jupiter both change the signs if there is one house or if there are more than one houses where both of them are aspecting or they are trying to impact or they are sitting together okay then for that particular time till they are together because Saturn stays for two and a half to three years and Jupiter will stay for one year. So till that time, that house becomes very powerful wherever that house or those houses are sitting in your horoscope as per your ascendant, they tend to give you results okay? or focus or something related to that house happens in a very powerful way, in a very life transforming way. Okay? It may not be like Rahu Ketu that suddenly out of the blue there's a burst and you're like bang what has happened I never expected this to happen. It is not like that. It is gradual expansion and growth in that area. Okay. Because every year the focus changes. So now uh, how will you know which houses is it affecting in your birth chart? Well for that first we have to see where are these planets transiting at all. Okay. So as you know already 12th of September Jupiter will change sign this year from the sign Virgo to the sign Libra okay I have made a video on Jupiter's transit in Libra so if you have not watched please go and watch and Saturn on end of October is going to change sign again from Scorpio to the sign of Sagittarius so that means we have to find houses where both of them are aspecting Okay, because both are sitting in different houses now. Now, Jupiter, where is he aspecting from Libra? Jupiter aspects the 5th house and the 7th house and the ninth house from wherever it is sitting. It will try to bless those three houses. Okay, so from Libra, 
which are the three houses the fifth seventh and ninth the fifth house from libra is the sign of aquarius yes and seventh house is the sign of aries and ninth house is the sign of gemini okay mercury the young prince <laughs> Aquarius are the old mature people who have a lot of wisdom and they are ready to share with you, okay? And Aries is the other sign which is getting affected. Now, which houses is Saturn impacting? Saturn is impacting from the sign of Sagittarius. It is aspecting Aquarius with its third aspect, okay? Because wherever Saturn sits, it will aspect the third, seventh and the tenth house from there, okay? So it is aspecting the sign of Aquarius because from Libra uh, oh, sorry from Sagittarius third house is the sign of Aquarius okay and then seventh house from Sagittarius is again Gemini okay and then tenth house from Sagittarius is the sign of Virgo so now Virgo and Aries are the two houses where either Jupiter or Saturn are aspecting but both of them are not aspecting together okay now among these houses, which I just mentioned, we have two common houses, okay, two common zodiac signs. What are they? Gemini and Aquarius, okay, because these two are the signs where Jupiter and Saturn are both simultaneously aspecting, okay. Gemini is the place where Jupiter is aspecting with the ninth aspect and Saturn is aspecting with its third aspect and Aquarius is the house where Jupiter is aspecting with the fifth aspect, okay, and Saturn's uh, third aspect is falling there and for Gemini his seventh aspect is falling there okay so now Gemini and Aquarius becomes very prominent Ju remember this Jupiter's fifth aspect and Saturn's third aspect in Aquarius and Saturn's seventh aspect and Jupiter's ninth aspect is falling in Gemini and Aquarius so now that means for the next months till Jupiter stays in the sign of Libra because Saturn will stay till 2020 okay the sign of Gemini and Aquarius wherever it is falling in our horoscope as per our ascendant becomes very prominent well now what is the sign of Gemini Ge Gemini sign real is related to communication okay it is the original third house of the zodiac so communication industry journalism media industry okay all these things will bloom okay and what is Aquarius Aquarius is the mool tricone sign of Saturn where Saturn is much more happier than in the sign of Capricorn after working 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 okay it goes into the sign of Aquarius where it finds a lot of stability and structure okay in a more refined sense okay Aquarius is the more refined sign of Saturn okay and it is also a air sign okay but the difference between Gemini and Aquarius is Gemini is a dual sign okay but Aquarius is a fixed sign that is why Aquarius is the sign of researchers okay which means that Aquarius people are not only delighting in discussing about ideals because water sign represents ideas basically okay and thoughts and expansion etc okay how to bring up new things in society how to bring change because air always keeps uh, moving from here there it's it can enter anywhere so these people are very much uh, they are very much adaptable okay gemini and aquarius and libra also now gemini is dual it means it is both fixed and movable okay but aquarius is a fixed sign okay now that means these areas of communication and ideas etc okay and implementation on them because Aquarius is coming and Gemini is also the energy of Mercury so that means trade commerce issues related to money marketing industry etc that is why it is also dual because whenever you are marketing something basically what you are doing you are trying to superimpose something on the other yes you are trying to prove that this is better than that that is why you should take it otherwise the marketing industry will collapse okay so that means the sign of Gemini and Aquarius are both air signs and they will have impact on our horoscope wherever they are falling because Jupiter and Saturn will both affect them and they will try to influence them okay that is why we need to look 
who are the planets that are sitting in the horoscope of anybody in the sign of Gemini and in Aquarius okay so for example if somebody has Venus placed in the sign of Gemini in the next year they might they might get into a relationship okay or something related to the relationship might happen okay or they might get married if suppose Sun is sitting in the sign of Gemini then your father might get a promotion okay or suppose Mercury is sitting in the sign of Gemini okay in your horoscope then what can happen then your relationship with your friends can increase it can improve or it can go down depending on other placements suppose if uh, enemies of mercury like moon are sitting with mercury then there can be complete mayhem in that okay or suppose if friends are sitting mercury venus are sitting together in the sign of gemini and this will do extremely good okay for friendships for relationships okay and suppose saturn itself is sitting there okay or in the sign of aquarius either of these two then there will be expansion in the areas of discipline in matters of commitment duty structure etc okay and if jupiter is sitting well this can mean the birth of a child or traveling to holy places going to god okay or meeting a new guru okay or whichever houses these planets that are sitting in these two signs are ruling they can also have an effect for example if somebody is a libra ascendant okay and his sun is in the sign of gemini for libra gemini is in the ninth house then sun here is not only the father it is also your elder sibling because it is ruling the 11th house there you see there this is the way you have to practice astrology otherwise if you just give a blank prediction that oh my son is sitting here but why did my elder brother get a promotion if you're a libra ascendant you might be wondering why and this is the reason i'm saying because your son is also the 11th law okay so diligently look at your horoscope which are the planets that are sitting in Aquarius and Gemini okay if these two are empty then not a problem that house wherever these two signs are falling they will have expansion tremendous expansion growth okay and because they are natural air signs so it also means that the ascendants which are having air okay which means Gemini, Aquarius and Libra, these three, they are going to be much, much, much more affected internally. Okay, because all these two signs, Gemini and Aquarius, for these three ascendants will fall either in the first, fifth or ninth house. Okay, for Libra, Gemini and Aquarius. So that means if you are a Libra ascendant or a Gemini ascendant or a Capricorn ascendant, regardless of it, your trines are going to get affected. That means you, trines are you yourself what you are internally okay what your ideals are what you think is right what you think is wrong what you think is love okay what you think is good what you think is bad all these things are going to be affected okay in a much more way okay and kendra the angular houses are more of what we do in this world okay what our actions relate to and trines are more of what we are internally okay so that's the difference between kendra and trikon okay so if you are a Gemini ascendant or a Libra ascendant or an Aquarius ascendant then get ready you are going to change inside personally after one year people will say oh you have changed so much internally okay you have grown inside as a person or your conception of what is good and bad what is right or wrong okay or your conceptions of spirituality has changed it has evolved it has gone to a new level okay and now you are much more contented after one year okay by the end of 2018 roughly november till the time jupiter and uh, stays in libra and then when it goes to scorpio till that time you will have a lot of inner growth okay so now i will discuss about the signs for all the different 12 ascendants okay and by this you can know wherever your uh, sign of gemini and aquarius is falling and always remember the thumb rule is check the component of both the signs and both are air signs okay so you can see universally the growth of communication industry will flourish okay and people will want to travel Gemini is travel short distance travel here there people will want to go here so the tourism industry will bloom okay and Aquarius is the sign of ideals as I already said so people will put their ideals into practice okay not just keep uh, bluffing in the air like a Gemini or a Libra would do okay they are very serious people because 
Aquarius is ruled by Saturn and also Rahu. That is why these people can have very much unorthodox thinking. Okay, so now there will be a beautiful mix between the Aquarius and the Gemini energy. Okay, therefore, before starting with the Lagna, okay, God is there with you all the time. Just look to Him and He will be there to help you grow through the transits of Jupiter and Saturn combined in the sign of Gemini and Aquarius. Okay. Therefore, if we take the first ascendant, well, who is the first ascendant? Yes, it is the sign where the sun gets exalted. It is the sign of Aries. Okay. First things first. So, for Aries people, your house and numbering is the same. So, for you, things are very much simple. Okay. Unlike Libra ascendants where the things go wrong. <laughs> Now, for you, your third house is Gemini and 11th house is Aquarius. Okay. So, as I said, you will have tremendous focus over short distance travel, okay, over gaining money through quick means, okay, through marketing stuff, through socializing with people, discussing with people in large organizations, network circles, okay, and talking about philosophy. Aquarius is also the sign of philosophy, by the way. Okay, because it is 12 from the sign of Pisces. Okay, no, uh, we have to understand this way also. So whenever you are meeting friends, you will have long, 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 long discussions. Okay, so be careful if you take too much time of people or uh, people may complain about you that, oh, you are speaking so long. Your ideas may be very good, but this can create mayhem in the lives of others because you are both the trying, uh, the Kama Trikonas, the houses of enjoyment are getting active. Okay. And you will have a tremendous desire to taste new, new things, to try new, new things, okay? Because if the 311 axis is activated, the 7th house also gets activated. 7th house is the house of desire, okay? Relationships, etc. So you will want to socialize and meet new, new people, okay? So this will happen, okay? Irrespective of the other conditions. And this will also happen because Jupiter itself is sitting in Libra, okay? So there will be growth and expansion in the areas of your marriage and in your friendships. And your relationship with the younger brother can improve this time, okay? Or it can spoil depending on the planets placed in your third house, okay? And your relationship with the elder sibling will also have some dynamics because the 11th house is the house of elder sibling, okay? And you will focus more on your gains, your money, your wealth, etc. How can you gain? You will want for, you will try for a promotion. And now you will be like, yes, I need to communicate with my boss. I will speak in a way that my boss will say yes i am ready to give you a promotion because 11th house is the house of gain of the 10th house because it is second from the 10th house okay so whatever you have done in your workplace now you will ask for recognition okay and if you are jobless you might get a job also now okay and if you are searching to meet new people this is a great time okay you can go and just meet people like this without much difficulty and whatever you will do, you will do it very fast because Gemini is there in your third house, okay? Your communication will become very fast, okay? And whatever you do, your thinking process will start very fast. And at the same time, your, there can be a bit of a mental disturbance in your background, okay? Because third house is also the subconscious mind, okay? So there can be too much overthinking or overprocessing, okay? So you need to take care of that. You don't over analyze things okay and you might take rest decisions very fast okay because mercury's energy is there in your third house and this house will be activated now okay so you need to take care that whatever decisions you make in this life okay related to new ventures because the third house is the house of initiation where you start something new because it is the house of courage so when you want to start something new you need a lot of courage okay so that is why you should be very careful in starting something new okay it can be a great opportunity at the same time my only precaution to all the aries ascendants would be that do not make a rash decision just pick yes i want to do this now because if there are planets like mars in your third house then uh, you might have a tendency to start something very fast okay without thinking of the pros and cons okay there's no problem in starting but you should think of the pros and cons okay or before doing or before breaking something you'll be like no i'm going to break it now okay so that is it for the aries ascendants okay and then 
if you take the next group of ascendants that is Taurus. Taurus only likes to eat. <laughs> but now they will like to eat more. Why? Because the Gemini Aquarius is falling in their second and tenth house. Okay. So you Taurus people, you will dream of food all the time. <laughs> you already always dream of food all the time because Taurus is the second house of the zodiac. It is only food, right? But now you will think of food. If there was a minute you were not thinking, now you will be like, no, I only want food. I don't want anything else. Okay. And now because the 210 axis is getting activated. So I would say this is not more of a family matter related to the second house. This will be more related to the money because second house, sixth house and tenth house are considered artha trikonas. Okay. They are the houses by which we gain wealth and sustenance. Okay. Sustenance is seen through the second house. Okay. Because it is the house of money and family, these two sustain us. Okay, if you don't have money or if you don't have a family, then uh, you might uh, get into trouble sometimes. Okay, so for you now, you will be very aggressive and very quick in terms of gaining money. Okay, now you, because Aquarius is in your tenth house and that is going through an expansion. Okay, your workspace will improve okay you will have new new opportunities coming in your career okay so if you are thinking of making a raise up to a next level okay then this is the time to approach your boss okay or if you are thinking to change your career okay or if you are planning that oh i don't like to do this now maybe i will do something else well then you should take the leap now because in the next one year whatever you do in the 10th house that will expand okay or if you are planning that no i will structure my workplace very much because saturn is also expecting aquarius right <laughs> not only jupiter remember saturn is also expecting so if you are lacking in areas of discipline if you are lacking in areas of communication related to your workplace which means if your relationship with the colleagues is not good then this is the time to improve it okay if the way people perceive you, the way you think people perceive you is not very good, then this is the time to improve it. Because now whatever you do will be blessed by Jupiter and Saturn. Okay. And because 10th house is a house where even malefics give great results. Okay. So irrespective of any planet in your 10th house, even if it is Rahu or Ketu, this dual transit will do good for you in matters of your 10th house. Okay. Phenomenal diagnosis. Phenomenal, phenomenal, phenomenal. Tremendous growth and expansion in the areas of your career. And because of that, your second house will also improve. Okay. Because the more you earn, the more you have a status, you have wealth, right? See, money comes because of status. Okay. Status doesn't come because of money. Okay. Because of the status, because of your high status, you will have more money, which is something very obvious because they are trines. Okay. Trines, not the religious trines, it is the Artha Trikon. Those are also known as trines. Okay. And now you will be like, very quickly you will want to hoard your assets. Do you understand? Hoarding means you will want to save. Okay. Now your mind will gravitate towards earning in the 10th house and putting it in your bank balance. Second house. Second house is the fixed assets. Okay. You might think that, okay, sometimes my family might need this. Okay. Or you might open a fixed deposit. Okay. Or you will focus on security basically. And you might run into new, new schemes for fixed deposits in the bank. So be careful with that. Okay. Because Gemini energy is there. You might be like, okay, I, I, I just want to put it. So I'll just put it. Okay. Or you will be searching for new, new innovative ideas of how to uh, save money in your bank. Okay. Fixed deposits. Okay. Or even if you invest, then be careful. Okay. Because uh, air sign people, they uh, the, the traits of the air signs are that they can do a lot of things without thinking. Okay, so be careful with your investments. Okay, and this will definitely expand your second house of money, wealth, and income. Okay, and you will want to travel with your family. Okay, because second house is also family. You'll be like, okay, now I have money, let me travel. Okay, and you will focus on your family. Some event can be there in your family. Some cousin might get married. Okay, some. Uh, somebody might have a child birth or in, in your own family uh, you might have some prominent event or you might get married because second house 
is also the house of marriage. Okay, two seven eleven are houses of marriage, just like for Aries ascendants. You can also gain life partner, and you might settle because second house is also settlement, just like the fourth house. Okay. Now, if you take the Gemini ascendants, then I already told for Gemini, Libra, and Aquarius, this is affecting your trines. Okay, your Dharma Triko, which means you yourself. So, your ascendant is affected and your ninth house is affected okay so this is a beautiful time okay so ascendant is what you yourself your image your name your fame what people think you are okay how you are perceived as it is the higher octave of the tenth house because tenth house deals with your karma and because of your karma what happens you are known okay so four houses away from the tenth house is your luck now which means it is you okay so the happiness is which is fourth house that comes from the tenth house is what you gain name fame yes so happiness that comes from your career is people say oh you are a great personality you have done great things okay like Albert Einstein or Mahatma Gandhi or Nelson Mandela or a great spiritual personalities okay like Ramakrishna Paramahamsa or Srila Prabhupada or Swami Vivekananda or Dalai Lama okay or whoever you take them Ramanuja Chari therefore this is a very phenomenal time to understand who you are internally as a person. How? By going into spirituality. Because Aquarius is in your ninth house. Okay, now ninth house has come. So that it means that this can be a great time for you to approach a guru. Okay, or to go into some new spiritual practice. Okay, this is a phenomenal time. To go and study something new, okay, because ninth house also deals with study matters of religion, spirituality, etc. Okay, and long distance travels, okay, and you will have this feeling that your inner traits, which are the airy traits, okay, communication, going from here, there, okay, adaptability, etc. Okay, these are traits of the air signs, they have increased. Tremendously because now both the trines are getting activated and Jupiter is sitting in your fifth house activating all the uh, The three houses one five nine. So now now Irrespective of what you are irrespective of which whichever planets are there in your lagna or in the fifth or ninth You will feel the need to communicate with people you will feel the need to go and do business do negotiations and go into Places of religion and spirituality. Okay, and this is a very good time to start something new spiritually this I don't know when this will happen in your life that your first house and ninth house is getting affected by Saturn and Jupiter simultaneously so for the next year do not miss this opportunity even if you are an atheist and watching this video not a problem go and read some religious book okay because ninth house deals with traditional religious uh, cultures and scriptures etc why not give it a try? Go and read the Ramayana, go and read the Bible if you are born, if you were born in a Christian family or if you are born in a Muslim family, if you have not read the Quran, this is a phenomenal time to read, okay? And because it is air sign, you can also share it with others, okay? You can be like, yes, now I want to share this. I read this shloka from the Gita to call up your friend and share with him, okay? Go up to long distance places. And keep preaching about spiritual knowledge that's the perfect thing you can do so gemini ascendants are the most luckiest okay because aquarius is in your ninth house okay higher philosophy is there in your ninth house okay and if you share it as i always say flow with the flow if you share spiritual knowledge with others then you will see tremendous happiness that is dawning into your life because you are going back to your component of the ascendant okay the tattu, which is vayu tattu, which is air okay so now is a phenomenal time to start something new spiritually okay and build yourself because gemini is the first house okay jupiter and saturn is telling we will help you build yourself okay so make yourself a strong person give yourself a very strong foundation by that what will happen is you will understand yourself more better okay and you will be able to relate to everybody better okay so that is a phenomenal time so that is why I would like to say to all Gemini Ascendants that be very punctual, be very active in the next one year, okay? And do things on time and do not lose this opportunity, okay? If you knew some guru who you left connecting, okay? 
due to whatever reason he was giving you some scriptural spiritual knowledge but then due to some reason you left uh, your connection with him or he left his connection with you then bang this is the time go back okay congratulations oh, utilize this opportunity and you will have great success in this world and now for the next ascendance cancer ascendance okay uh, emotional the sign of mother and love and care and affection emotion <sighs> <laughs> this is happening in your 12th house and in the 8th house okay now what is 12th house 12th house is the house of seclusion loneliness okay and 12th house is also the house of sleep where you want to sleep okay but well, that's the predicament of the cancer ascendant that in, they like to sleep but somehow they have difficulty sleeping because the moment they want to sleep they want to talk to somebody because Gemini is in their 12th house, okay. <laughs> now, Gemini and Aquarius for you falls in your 12th and 8th houses, okay. These are the Moksha houses, okay. So, you may face events during this time which will help you to see the other side of the world, okay. Other side of the world means you will know that whatever we have in this world is temporary. Things can be taken away from us okay or you might have to let go of certain things which will ultimately end up making you more strong and more positive okay because 12th house deals with the things that we have to leave to improve ourselves okay it is the house of pending karma okay so if there are any planets in the 12th house or in the 8th house then you need to be careful regarding those areas okay and be very clear okay and be very consistent about them okay whatever decisions you take in matters of your 12th house and in the 8th house decide properly sit down deliberate okay talk to uh, talk to uh, people who are experienced okay suppose you have venus in the 8th house okay in the sign of aquarius and suppose you are going through a bad time with your spouse if you are planning that oh i can't do it anymore i am letting go of this person then stop <laughs> don't do it now of course you might have to do it that is okay but stop and take pause and because it is air sign so you might want to do things fast okay and one way it is good that you will let go of certain things because it is the 12th house right so at the end of jupiter's transit in libra when it moves to scorpio you will feel as if i am happier now <laughs> because Jupiter and Saturn will tell you that my dear sir to be happy in this world you have to let go of this thing toxic things toxic people toxic relationships okay which you are cultivating okay in the hope of getting shelter in the hope of getting happiness in the hope of being enlightened okay now Jupiter Saturn is telling you that look decide on this if you want this to continue then okay but if you think it will not continue well then you might have to let go of it okay because both are moksha houses okay that is why for you it is very important that you take into some spiritual practice cool down your mind calm down your mind okay and communicate properly okay regarding the matters of the eighth house which is sudden occurrences sudden deaths controversy scandals and uh, things which are buried under the ground and 12th house is the house of loss and letting go and those kind of things hospitals uh, uh, expenses okay and hidden enemies are also from the 12th house okay so you need to be careful when you deal with all these matters okay because you might have a tendency that okay whatever I was not able to do now I will do it but at the same time you have to be careful okay because later on you might uh, realize that oh what did I do why why, why did I do, do, do such a thing I should have not let this person go from my life okay at the same time if there are people who are troubling you then it's best to let them go if you decide deliver decide and deliberate properly that yes this is what I need to do okay and then you will have peace in your life okay and 
this is the time to start something related to occult hidden things etc because it is the 8th house and 12th house also okay so for Gemini it is the 9th house and for you it is the 8th house and 12th house okay so it is equally good okay the only difference is between the 9th and the 8th 12th axis is that you might have to learn some lessons without which you will not take to spirituality okay and because of that it is good that we maintain a very humble nature okay we try to uh, keep good links with people okay and we don't try to brag about ourselves because then people will feel that this person seems he knows too much okay so then they will go away from us okay so be careful okay and then for the kings the royal people after the eclipse for Leo ascendants this transit is again happening in your 11th house and in the 7th house okay now what is the 11th house 11th house is friendship networking socializing money etc and it is also happening in your 7th house because for you Aquarius is in the 7th house and 7 and 11 both are houses of marriage okay so now is a time to think if you are single to get married okay and now is a time to expand your relationship with your spouse what what if you're married do you marry again <laughs> no, no 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 if you're married then you will focus on your marriage you will see what are the areas which i am lacking in okay why am i lacking in these areas okay why am i at all not able to go ahead with my partner why am i not able to cooperate properly with my partner okay if there are such issues then you this time for the next one year because of 7 11 uh, the effect of the 7th house and the 11th house you will want to solve your issues in your relationships okay or if you're single you might find somebody okay because this can definitely happen because it is the 7th house okay and 11th house also so friends also okay so you will communicate everything Whatever is happening regarding the areas of marriage and friends, you will take a very aggressive communicatory approach, okay? Because now you will feel that I need to expand the horizon. And 7th house is also business, partnership, 11th house is gains. So if you are planning to open a business, this is a phenomenal time, okay? If you are planning to go into a joint partnership, joint venture, okay? And if you are planning to expand your image, your name and fame through the 7th house, okay? Then this is a phenomenal time, especially if there are planets like Mercury or Rahu in the seventh house or in the eleventh house for your in your horoscope for Leo ascendants. Then you are extremely blessed. Then this transit will be very favorable for your money. Okay, why I'm saying this because for Leo ascendants, Mercury rules the second house and the eleventh house. So if there, if you have Mercury placed in the seventh or eleventh, then this transit will give you bang boom of money. Okay. And you will want to socialize more spend more time with your spouse okay and there can be some achievement in the life of your younger brother also or younger sister if you have any younger sibling okay so for your ascendants great time to socialize party begins <laughs> and if you're single then search for somebody who knows you might find somebody <laughs> And if you are already in a relationship, then have a great time and focus. Whatever issues you are having, sort it. Okay. And then later on, you will be happy in your marital life. And then we have the next group of ascendants, the technical people, Virgo ascendants. For them, this is happening in their 10th house and 6th house. Okay. So now, Virgo people, you will only want to work, 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 work. Why I am saying? Not because of the 10th house, because of the 6th house. <laughs> you will be like, I will solve all problems in my communication in the workplace. Okay. If there is something which is lagging, okay, you will want to make it go through very fast. Okay. And because 6th house is also the house of your health. Okay. You will want to improve your health. Suddenly you will be like, no, 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 I need to improve this. Okay. You will join into new, new areas 
Maybe you may join two, three gym classes together. <laughs> Don't do it, be careful, okay? And you might want to take up different medicines, okay? Different ways by which you can improve your health. And this is a time you should improve your health because both Jupiter and Saturn are looking into your sixth house, okay? And also in the 10th house of work, career, name, fame, profession. Now the 610 axis is activated rather than the 210 axis like for Taurus. So for you, it will be more of working with discipline. For Taurus, it was working and saving money, but now for you, it will be working and discipline. Okay. So this is a very strong time. If you realize that you are not disciplined enough or you are not getting up on time, okay, or you do not have a structure in life, you do not have a regulation in life because sixth house is represented by Saturn because Saturn is the significant of the Karaka of the sixth house. Then you will realize that you can have issues in your workplace, okay? And because of that, if you are not disciplined, then you will not be able to perform well in your 10th house, okay? But now because Jupiter, Saturn are looking, so it is a phenomenal time to start something new, okay? And to expand in the areas of your health, okay? And in the areas where you feel that there are improvements in my discipline, in my structure, in my commitment, in my duty, okay. And then later on, you might also feel that I need to focus on my enemies, okay. So now, if you are having enemies, if you were having, now is the time to gain victory over them, especially if you have planets like Mars and the Sixth House. Bang! Congratulations. You will go and rip them apart, everybody. So all the Virgo people, you will be like, yes, because you are originally the sixth house. Sixth house is the house of Virgo, right? So now for you, sixth house from your house becomes very important, okay? And you will talk to people about different healthcare services, okay? And different ways how to improve your career. You will try to make deals, negotiations, etc. And then you will try to communicate with your boss. And then you will be like, oh, somehow I need a raise, no? Because 10th house is carrying status. And I trust and trust me, if you bring discipline into your workplace, automatically you will have gain of money, wealth, prosperity, name, fame, etc. Okay. But the sixth house has to be strong. Only then the tenth house functions. See, it goes like this: first is the sixth house, then you go to the tenth, then you go to the second house, where you will ultimately save your money. Okay. So sixth house is the beginning. Okay. And tenth house is the passage, and then Second house is your earnings, okay? Now, Jupiter is already sitting in your second, okay? So there will be improvement in the areas of money, etc., growth. So, now for the next one year, you are only supposed to work, work, work. <laughs> Don't think much of money and results, okay? Focus should be on working, okay? Work seriously, work with duty, work with commitment, work with structure. Then you will understand that finally, I am gaining something in this world. Then for the next Libra ascendance, your ninth house and your fifth house is getting activated. There you go, fifth house of children, love, romance, affairs, okay, creativity, fifth house, all the matters related to what you love in this world, okay. So if you are thinking to start some new hobby, this is the time, bang. Do it, don't think. <laughs> and now, if you do something new, you will definitely put it in YouTube. <laughs> because you people like to share, you people like to communicate, you people like to meet people and mingle and socialize because you are Libra, the original seventh house of negotiations, deals, contracts. And because Gemini is in your ninth house, okay? So, this is again a phenomenal time to start something spiritual, okay? To go to your guru and ask him and because Jupiter is in your first house after September of 12 phenomenal time man don't lose it Libra sense beautiful time go and start something spiritual go and pray to God that oh my god <sighs> Jupiter was in my 12th house roaming in this land of confusion and darkness <laughs> Darkness is more of 8th house, but 12th house also, it leads you to complete darkness. So now you should chant this mantra. Namasoma, Jyotir Gamaya, Mrityulma, Sadgamaya. 
that please lead me from light to darkness. Oh God, okay. Because your clients are getting affected and you yourself will change as an individual. And now your focus will be not on your looks, not on your appearance. Now your focus will be on the matters of 5th house of creativity and ninth house of God, of divinity. Okay. So you will communicate very aggressively. Whatever you know today, tomorrow you will learn it and you will be like, Hey, you know, I met man, come here, I will tell you something. You know, I read this Gita in that sloka Krishna was telling like this. I read this verse from the Bible. Because Gemini energy is there in your ninth house and it's fabulous, you should do it, okay? You can share it in the comments below also, I will be the most happiest person to see, okay? And then for the Scorpio ascendants, <laughs> again, this is happening in your eighth house and in your fourth house, okay? So 4-8 axis is getting activated. So. If you are not married, this can be a wonderful time to settle down, okay? Because fourth house deals with matters of settlement, okay? And then when you finally end up taking a new property, okay? Because fourth house is also property. So if you are already married, you might take a new property or a new car, okay? It might happen. You might have the money and you might take it, okay? Or you might want to start some uh, business related to hotel management or eating okay or re related to real estate or you might plan to invest money there okay and you will because it is air sign you will have different new new ventures okay new new ways by which you can uh, connect to these areas okay of the fourth house and the matters of the eighth house and because it is eighth house also so you will undergo a lot of transformation in the next year okay because jupiter is in your 12th house from there it is aspecting the eighth house okay so this is the year of transformations okay so for you it is advisable that you maintain a good schedule eat on time sleep on time okay and don't take any major risks for the next coming year okay because you you might find backlash okay you might find that things are banging on to you okay you might end up losing more money than saving, okay? And if your relationship with people is getting affected due to some reason, then try to maintain humility, okay? And try to understand them, okay? And do not take any rash decisions, okay? And be careful of hidden controversies and scandals. So do not break the law, Scorpio sentence, okay? Be very careful. <laughs> because Ketu is the core ruler of your ascendant, apart from Mars. So Scorpio Ascendant should be very careful before doing things which will give them trouble because they end up feeling very lonely at the end because Ketu is your core ruler, okay? Which is good for spirituality. At the same time, on a mundane level, you might feel a bit feel it a bit difficult. At the same time, fourth house and eighth house are moksha houses, okay? So for you, it is very good if you can start something new in spirituality because this will help you to clean your inner baggage. Fourth house is the house of Cancer. It is the house of your moon. And eighth house is the house of Scorpio where moon gets debilitated. Okay. So your emotions, you might need to settle them this time. Okay. Or you might need to see who are those people or what are those attachments that uh, you are keeping, holding on to yourself, okay, because both house also deals with attachment, okay, so you might feel the need to let go of those attachments, it can be anything, people, property or anything in life, okay, some very strong attachment which you have, you will be forced to work on that, okay, and 8th house also deals with death and all these things, okay, so maintain a positive attitude, for the next coming year okay and pray to god because eighth house is the house where spirituality begins it is the feet of your guru because it is 12th from the ninth house 12th house is feet and ninth house is your guru so guru's feet is in the eighth house so whenever you have problems go and consult the guru okay go and fall at his feet that my dear sir please help me and always seek guidance okay otherwise you may end up in 
a situation where you feel it. Where am I? <laughs> you might ask, oh, where is God? You said he is there all the time, but where is? Remember, you cannot find God at this stage where we are. Directly, we have to find him through the people who are close to him, who are elevated enough to be connected to him. So, please stay connected, Scorpio Ascendants, to spiritual personalities and to people who can enlighten you, okay, when you are in depression, because 8th house is the house of depression, okay. If you go into depression sometimes, okay, and if you go, then don't worry, this will only stay for a year and then things will get better because then Jupiter will come to your first house. Great blessing coming into your first house. Can't get better than this. Okay. Then we have Sagittarius Ascendants. Third house and seventh house is getting affected. Okay. So tremendous focus. And you can get married also, just like Leo Ascendants. Okay. And tremendous focus in the area of communication and short distance travel. Now is the time you want to do short distance travels. Now, Sagittarius Ascendants, if you were like sitting, not doing anything, now you'll be like, Bang on man, I'm I'm out of here. <laughs> so tomorrow uh, after 12th of September maybe I might find your photos in Facebook or in Instagram. I mean <laughs> and I'll be like, oh he has gone here, he has gone there. Already I know so many uh, some Sagittarius ascendants who have already told me that uh, my dear sir, this is my plan. What do you think is it good? And then I'm like I already know it, you are going. <laughs> you don't have to tell me that you are going. I already know that after 12 September, you will take a trip outside. Okay. And great focus in communication. Great focus towards your marriage. Your marriage will improve. If you are single, try to get married. Okay. And now, Jupiter is also in your 11th house. So, fulfillment of hopes, wishes and desires. Fabulous time. Okay. Sagittarius, it is only plus, plus and plus and thumbs up for you. Jupiter in the 11th, once in 12 years it comes, that rare moment. And from there it aspects your third house, fifth house and seventh house. So birth of children is also possible, okay. And because Aquarius is in the third house, so communication, okay. But your communication will be very philosophical. Okay, because your nature by default is also philosophical because you yourself, the Lagna itself is Sagittarius. Okay, so you will have short distance travels, but in that you will meet people, very old people, very mature people. They will say, come, I will give you teachings about life. <laughs> and you will take it this time and you will also share your ideas. You will talk to them, they will talk to you. Okay, because they will also have Gemini Aquarius somewhere, right? So they can't help them. That has to happen. So Sagittarius Ascendants, congratulations, great time, Jupiter in the 11th, can't get better than this as I always say. And then ultimately we have the group who is always sweating all the time, who is that group? Capricorn, yes, welcome to Capricorn. <laughs> Capricorn people are always into work, work, work. Oh my God, Capricorn Ascendants. So finally, for Capricorn Ascendants, their sixth house and second house is getting activated. Okay. So now, you need to be very much disciplined. Okay. You will focus on money now. You will become very serious because sixth house is the house of celibacy. Sixth house is the house of troubles, disputes, arguments, trials, tribulations. It doesn't mean this will happen to you. It simply means that you will work on improving them. Okay. Sixth house is the house of discipline. Now, if you are not having money, which is the second house, you'll be like, why am I not having money? Why is he having? Why is he having? Why is she having? Why am I not having? I want money now. And then you will realize that why you are not having money? Because maybe there are habits which is inhibiting you from going ahead okay so if you are a victim of smoking or drinking if you are having addictions then now is the time to let go of them because the sixth house is having dual aspect of jupiter and saturn okay this will immensely benefit you to take control over the areas okay and i'm telling you if you do not work on it then you will realize at one point that Things are not going to work out, okay? 
and I know some Capricorn ascendants who have been already telling me that they are planning to let go of some addictions or some habits. Then I said, yes, you are right. You should do it now. Okay. And improve your health. Okay. Maintain discipline in your life. And then you can slowly focus on money. Because unless the sixth house is strong, there is no use of the tenth house or the second house. Okay. And simultaneously, you will also want to focus on your family. You might want to get settled. Okay. If somebody is of that age, 28 to 35, they might want to get married or settled depending on the time place circumstances of the country or the origin or your culture from wherever you are okay for some it may be early for some it might be late but discipline is most important for you now do not let go of discipline if you let go of discipline things will go haywire okay and if you're not sleeping on time sleep on time because saturn your ascendant lord has gone to the 12th house now <laughs> It will rip you apart if you break any discipline now. Okay, so be careful. Capricorn ascendants. And take your time. Be peaceful. <laughs> and Saturn in the 12th is also very good for spirituality. Okay. And Jupiter will go to your 10th house. You know, in September 12th. So, maintain good schedule. Focus on your work. And there will be expansion. Because Jupiter is the planet of expansion. You know, that is in your 10th house. Fabulous. Mind-blowing. Wonderful. Can't get better than this. It was already in your ninth, giving you high level dharma, spirituality, in inquisitiveness, wisdom, fulfillment. Now it is going to your tenth house, and the dual aspect of Jupiter Saturn is in your second and sixth house. So be very punctual at work, have a good relation with your boss, don't angry him. Okay, <laughs> and then for Aquarius ascendants, congratulations, Aquarius people are. Very lucky. Again, your trines are getting affected. So your Lagna is getting improved, improvement. And Gemini is in your fifth house. And Jupiter is in your ninth house. Wow, can't get better than this. I love you, Aquarius. I love you, Sagittarius. <laughs> and I love you, Libra. Jupiter in the first house. My God, this transit. Is going to be very powerful for all the all you three. So Aquarius now it is only about you and your creativity. Now if you are married you will want to have children okay and if you already have children your children might get some name fame okay some promotion can come to them or you might want to focus on them more. If their marks are less in the exam, then you'll be like, why, why is your marks less? Why are you not studying? And if you have any creative interests, you will pursue them very aggressively. Okay? And you will talk about it with many people. You will search for ideas and ventures where you can express them. Okay? Because it is the sign of Gemini. Okay? And because Aquarius is your first house itself. So, you will become more philosophical. You will be like, yes, I need to work because Saturn is the co-ruler of this uh, sign with Ra. So you will become very disciplined about yourself. Okay, You will become very committed to your health, to your body, your looks. Okay, You might join the gym this time. Okay, Just like the Gemini ascendants. <laughs> and then at the end you will realize that I have become a better person. New love affair can come. Fifth house. <laughs> Okay, so if you are planning to open an account in Tinder, then plus, 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 okay, you can do. Jupiter and Saturn has decided they will bless you. <laughs> Unless your calming account is empty, okay, so that's the prerequisite. And Jupiter is in the ninth house, once in 12 years, fabulous, mind-blowing, spirituality is flowing into you. Na? And I know some Aquarius assessments who have been telling me that. They are feeling as if I should go into some spiritual uh, organization and do something spiritual. So mind blowing, okay? And tremendous growth in your name, fame, image, reputation, etc. Because your Lagna is having the dual aspect of Jupiter and Saturn. So Aquarius, please pursue your creative interests diligently. Do it very fast. Don't think. If you just love something, just do it. Okay? You love painting, just do it. You are planning to get a new face cut, face look. Okay, you are planning to lose weight. Beautiful or gain weight. Beautiful. Do it effortlessly. Don't must think. Okay. And now coming to the last 
I see ascendance. Okay, for you, this is again happening in your fourth house and the twelfth house. So when this happens in your fourth house and in your twelfth house, what happens basically? You will realize that you have to clean up yourself, <laughs> your internal self. Okay, otherwise you might realize that there are things which are going beyond your control okay because the fourth house is the moksha house okay and twelfth house is also the house of letting go okay and fourth house deals with your inner contentment inner peace inner happiness inner fulfillment okay what you love inside because that is why it is also the house of the mother okay because you love things related to your mother etc okay and then what happens ultimately you will feel that you might have to let go of certain things and ultimately become more spiritual okay you might be focusing on your home this time you might be thinking that i need to change my home okay you might decorate your home okay you might have a travel regarding your home okay or you might travel back to your homeland okay or you might travel away from your homeland because the 12th house is also getting activated okay and because of this you need to be very careful with whatever you do in matters of hospitalization okay in matters of anything which you do in secrecy okay avoid doing activities in secrecy it is not good for you in this time okay anything wrong anything which is not considered very good in people's eyes it is not good to do that okay pisces ascendance especially and be very careful with your sleep okay you might feel that i'm not able to sleep properly okay or when you sleep there can be thoughts in your mind which is which are uh, hovering again and again okay so you you will realize this time this one year when jupiter and saturn are aspecting your fourth house and your twelfth house that there are certain things in your heart which you have to release okay <laughs> Because fourth house is the house of Gati, your goal, your direction. Okay, what happens to you ultimately? It's the path of the soul. Okay, and it is harmonious with the twelfth house because twelfth house is nine from the fourth. Okay, so at the end you will realize that whatever thing I was holding on to, it did not give me satisfaction, and ultimately I have to let go of it. So that is very good for you. Okay, and now. You will want to stay a bit secluded. You will want to stay in your inner chambers because four and twelve are both inner chambers. Okay, seventh house, eleventh house, third house are uh, showing yourself to the world. Tenth house is showing yourself outside. Okay, but now you will want to stay secluded, and now you will want to focus only on yourself. Okay, and whatever you do, you will do it within the closed chambers, and you will become very philosophical because the twelfth house is getting active. You will think on who are you, Athato Brahma Jigyasa. Think who are you, okay? Enquire about the truth because you will realize that ultimately the 12th house reigns supreme. You have to let go of things, let go of people. Or you might take a trip to foreign lands or you can meet some foreign guru there, okay? Depending on the planets which are placed in the 4th house and the 12th house, okay? Which has been a very long video. That's it from my side. If you have any questions, queries or comments, then please let me know. And if you have still not subscribed, then I don't know why you have not still. Please do it. And if you know your friends and family who are wanting to know what the double transit of Jupiter Saturn is going to do, then please send them the link of this video. Okay. And if you have any questions, queries and comments, then please let me know. Until next time, bye-bye, see you, good luck, all the best, Jupiter Saturn, double transit, bye-bye.